Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 10th of September and the time has just gone 9.02 British summer time. Well, it's been a fairly quiet start to the European session this week, uh, even though uh, the usual problems of the potential trade the potential trade spat between China and the US rumbles on, and also the same old worries about emerging American economies are still taking on. But that being said, it's actually been a fairly... Uh, quite star to the European session. Uh, over the weekend, we had some trade figures coming out of China, and the numbers show that China's trade surplus with the United States has now reached a record level. Uh, this is sure to actually fire up Donald Trump and actually add, can add weight to President Trump's argument um, that there's a trading imbalance between the two nations and that it's up to him to actually re, re, um, re, rebalance the trading relationship. President Trump has already warned that we could see an additional $200 billion worth of tariffs being imposed on Chinese imports very soon. Uh, and there's also a potential, the possibility of another $260 billion worth of tariffs on Chinese imports lined up behind that as well. Uh, there is no progress on that, on, on that so far, but that, that's what's hanging over the markets in relation to the, the trade conflict between Washington, D.C. and Beijing. Uh, speaking of the United States, at the back end of last week, we had a solid update from the U.S. in terms of the non-farm payrolls. Uh, over 200,000 uh, 200, jobs were added in August, uh, a solid number. The unemployment rate remained unchanged at 3.9%, but the most important component of the job support was, of course, the wa wages figure. Uh, average wages on a yearly basis increased, uh, gr grew by 2.9%, and this really kind of uh, sparked chatter that we could have two more rate hikes from the Federal Reserve this year. Uh, the Federal, the Federal Reserve are meeting this month, and there's already a quite high probability we could see a rate hike, but now there's the increased uh, um, talk of a, of a rate hike in both September and also uh, in December, and that has actually pushed, pushed the US dollar higher. And obviously, the higher US dollar, that's likely to kind of put further pressure on emerging market economies and emerging market currencies, such as the Turkish, Turkish lira. Uh, also, currencies that are under pressure, the Indian rupee, there's the political crisis, um, in Argentina, Venezuela is under pressure, and also South Africa is on uh, is now in a, tech, a technical recession. So these are all issues that they, they need to keep an eye on. These are the kind of major themes of the markets this week. Take a look at the week ahead, and the week ahead can be found on our website called cfcmarkets.com. Under news and analysis, you'll find the week ahead article. It covers the major corporate and economic stories of the week ahead. Uh, so tomorrow we have first half figures from JD Sports. Uh, on Tuesday and Thursday, we have UK unemployment of wages, and we also have the Bank of England rate decision. On Wednesday, we have full year figures from Dunelm. On Wednesday, we have a, we, there's a there's a new Apple Apple having a, have a have an event on, and it's a, and we could see the the, the launch of a, of, a new, of a new iPhone. We also see kind of enhancements made to the I, iPhone 8. On Thursday, there's the Bank of England. Sorry, apologies. On Thursday, it is the European Central Bank, the ECB uh, rate meeting. Uh, the European Central Bank uh, have, have talked about winding down their QE policy at the back end of this year. So we, 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 that's what our traders will be looking out for. And on Friday, we have uh, Chinese uh, retail sales and also industrial production. And also on Friday, we have retail sales coming out of the US. So I'm taking a quick look now at some of the major markets and see how they're shaping up. Starting off with the FTSE 100, and on Friday, uh, the FTSE 100 fell to a level not seen since April. So it really kind of sums up how kind of negative sentiment uh, we've seen in the FTSE 100. Uh, the market has been kind of in, a, in a in a downward trend since early August. So for the last month or so, we saw a lower low, we saw a lower low, a lower high, and then we saw another lower low. If you take a look at the MACD histogram, the MACD, indica MACD indicator. We can see a steady increase in negative momentum. So as the market's moving lower, there's an increase in negative momentum. So, we, so the downward move is being confirmed by the increase in negative momentum. So if the if this move does continue to push on lower, we could look at targeting this area here of uh, seven thousand. This area here of seven thousand one hundred and eighty-eight. Move to the upside could run into, into resistance in around in around this area here at seven thousand four hundred and twenty-two, and move beyond that. Uh, we could see resistance come into play at the 30 moving average, this red line here, um, which is at 7,490. Take a look now at what's going on over in Germany in the DAX. So the German market has been pushing lower since late July. And we, we can see here that the, uh, the rally in July got nowhere near the high, the high of June. So the market turned over on itself, but did manage to find some support 
from this area here in around the 12,100 level. The market pushed higher, but the August high got nowhere near the July high, and then the market sold off quite heavily. And as you can see here, I've had a quite a size a size of break below this area here of in around 12,100. And the market uh, on Friday fell to a level once again, not like, like the FTSE fell to a level not seen since April. So really kind of sums up how, how kind of negative uh, the sentiment is. If taking a look at the MACD indicator, there's also a steady increase in negative momentum. So this downward move is being confirmed by the steady increase in negative momentum. So the, 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 the momentum and the kind of the pace is with the sellers for the time being. If the market does continue to push on lower from here, we could find support coming to play from this area here in around the 11,750 area. And if you go south of that, the area to keep an eye out for would be this area here, just shy of just, just south of 11,700. And if you go break below that, we could see further losses. Move to the upside, should we bounce higher from here? Could run into, into resistance. Uh, this old support may act as a future resistance which comes to play at 12,123. This year here is could be a potential, potentially important level, seeing as it acted as fairly decent support on a few occasions in the last number of months. And if we move on higher from there, we could be looking at heading back up towards this blue line here, the 50-day moving average of 12,477. Take a look now at what's going on in the US markets. As I mentioned, we had a fairly decent update from from the U.S. on Friday with the non-farm payrolls report. Uh, Taking a look at, at the Dow Jones, so the Dow Jones hit a multi-month high in August, at the back end of August, and the market gave back a small bit of ground since then. But notice how the, the Dow Jones has managed to hold above above this line here, which comes in, which is comes into play in around 25,820, and that that line there, that this area here, coincides with the um, with the late February high. So we've managed to break. A break above the what would be the old, old resistance, and now it's actually potentially, potentially acting as support. And if you do manage to get a push on higher from here, the first area to keep an eye for will be the late August high, which comes into play in around the 26,170 region. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking any back up towards 20, 26,300 in this area here. Uh, move to the downside, should we fall back below this area here at 25,820? We could be looking heading back down towards 25,507, which would be the um, the high from the the middle of March. And also we did see some consolidation in around that level uh, in, in both July and also in August. Take a look now. What's going on in the gold market? <clears throat> so gold's been uh, trading in a fairly small. Fairly small range uh, in the past number of weeks. Uh, gold's been kind of dragged, continues to be dragged around by the U.S. dollar. As I mentioned, uh, the U.S. dollar is, uh, is is on the up, given the the, the the strong earnings figures we saw from the U.S. at the back end of last week. But granted, the U.S. dollar is still well off the uh, the highs of August, which in fact were 2014 highs. So if you do look to kind of retest, the U.S. dollar index does look to retest uh, the the August highs. We could see further pressure uh, on the gold market, and gold has been in a fairly solid downward trend since April, a classic example of lower lows and lower highs. While we remain below this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 12.15, the outlook is likely to remain negative for gold. If you do manage to kind of continue to push on lower from here, we could be looking heading back down towards 17, sorry, apologies, 11.75. And if we go below 11.75, we could be looking at retesting the recent low of 11.60. Sticking with the commodity theme and heading over now to Brent crude oil. Brent crude oil as the, the oil market has recouped. The Brent crude oil market has recouped a good chunk of the ground of the ground that it lost um, basically between May and the, the middle of August. So the market has been pushing higher here. We're, we're back above the 100-day moving average, and notice how this this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, is actually actually as support uh, in the last couple of sessions, which comes into play at 75 spot 51. If we continue to hold above that metric, we could see the market heading back up potentially towards the, to retest 80. And if we go beyond 80, to keep an eye out then for the, the high in May of 80 spot 89. And if we go beyond 80 spot 89, the next day to keep an eye out for will be 81 spot 53. And if you go ahead of towards, if you go north of 81, we are looking at multi-year highs. Move to the downside. 
um, in in in, uh, in Brent Crude Oil. If you manage to fall back below the 100-day moving average, support might be found at this blue line here, the 200-day move, the 50-day moving average, which comes to play at 70, 74 spot 56. And if you go south of there, support might come into play in around the 72.50 region. Uh, it's nearly been, been of a fairly decent consolidation in, in recent months. An area you really need to keep an eye out for on the Brent uh, crude oil chart is the, this red line here, the trading moving average. Notice how it acted as very decent support back in the middle of August. So there's a possibility it may act as support again in the future. And the and the, and the trading moving average comes into play at 71 spot 47. Now the WTI market isn't as strong, but broadly speaking, it's the, the shape in the chart looks reasonably similar. So WTI once again uh, received support from the 50 from the 100 moving average. This uh, apologies, the 30 moving average. This red line here, um, as the as the Brent crude, and and, and uh, WTI has been pushing higher since, uh, since 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 early August, but it has actually managed to kind of give up uh, some, some of the, some of the uh, some of the gains, but. While it holds above this red line here, the trading moving average, which comes into play at 65 spot 71, it's likely that the outlook, the outlook will remain positive. And if you do continue to push on higher from here, the next area to keep an eye forward to the upside will be in around the 61 spot 70 region. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at uh, retargeting re re 72 spot 79. Uh, moves to the downside, like I said, may find some support at the 200 day moving average at 65 spot 71 and if we go south of that uh, that, will, that will be kind of quite worrying seeing as that area did manage to act as support previously but if you do make breaks up head south of it keep an eye out for the mid june low of 63 spot 58. take a look now at a couple of currency pairs so the euro has been lo using, losing ground versus the us dollar since april uh, we had a fairly decent bounce back uh, between mid and late August, but still the market has, has appeared to turn over, turn over on itself yet again. Um, it did, when the market rallied between mid and late August, it didn't quite get as high as one spot 17.50, and notice how that area has, has, has acted as a bit of resistance area in, in recent months. So while we remain south of one spot 17.50, it's likely that the outlook for euro dollar will remain negative. If we continue to push on lower from here, we could be looking at retesting the one spot 15.10 area or one spot 15. It did act as a fairly decent support um, earlier, earlier in, in, in recent months, so it could act as a decent support uh, again in the near term. But if you manage to break south of one spot 15, we could be looking heading back down towards the August low of the kind of one spot 13 region. Uh, if you do manage to break above one spot 17.50, and there to keep an eye for will be one spot 18.50. Uh, notice I've did ma that area was actually a, was a area of both support and resistance in, in recent months. And lastly, you take a look at the pound versus the US dollar. So the pound has also been losing ground versus the greenback since uh, since April, and unfortunately, it's, it remains in the in the downward trend. Um, take, take a look at this blue line here, the 50-day moving average. We've seen on a few occasions the market has tried to actually um, has, has pushed up against it, but hasn't actually quite gotten above it yet. So while we, we, we remain south of this uh, this blue line here of the 50-day moving average, which comes into play. Around the get at one spot 30 region. Um, if you remain south of that area, it's likely that, that the outlook is going to remain negative for pound versus the US dollar. And if you do manage to kind of drift lower from here, we could be looking at targeting the recent low of one spot 2785. And if you go south of that, we could be looking heading back down towards we could be the, uh, the August low of one spot 2661. And if you go south of that, we could be looking heading back down towards one spot 2590. But if you do manage to break above the 50-day moving average, which comes into play in around the 130 area, that area may then act as support. And if you continue to push on higher from there, we could be looking at targeting this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, which comes into play at 1 spot 32.21. 1 spot 32.21.22. Uh, notice how this, this, this area here kind of coincides with, with an area of uh, a fairly, fairly sizable consolidation. Uh, back in May, uh, May through July, that area, the kind of one spot 32, 32.50, one spot 32, kind of 20 region has acted as a as a bit of a uh, is a as a bit of a resistance zone previously, so it could actually act a resistance once again in the near term. 
cmcmarketingmentor.com. If you have any comments on this video or any other videos that we create here at CMC Markets, feel free to leave, leave us a review on Google Reviews. Um, and that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.